Should Bochi get on? Kurt Bavakwa, always a tough assignment, will be the batter. Two out, bases loaded. No place to put Bochi. Mets up by three. Took something off the fastball, and Ray Knight will go to first. This ball game is history. Some rather tenuous moments here in the ninth inning, but Orozco gets out of it. No runs, two hits. The Padres stranded three to strand nine for the evening. As Jesse Orozco picks up his 28th save. Dwight Gooden gets the win. He's now 14 and eight on the year. Ralph Kiner will be here for Kiner's Corner with an interesting guest. And I will be back for the wrap-up right after this interesting word from Budweiser. Well, the all-important first game of this doubleheader was won by the New York Mets and Dwight Gooden. Dwight Gooden, for the 11th time this year, struck out 10 or more San Diego Padres. He has done it 11 times, the record held by Tom Seaver. Tom struck out 10 or more batters back in 1971. The line score on the ball game, 4, 8, and 0 for the San Diego Padres. 7, 12, and 0 for the Mets. Winning pitcher, as we said, uh, Dwight Gooden. The losing pitcher, Andy Hawkins. His record now 7 and 8. The big blow in the ball game, a home run by Darryl Strawberry. Darryl broke an 0 for 19 slump by hitting his 18th home run off of Greg Booker, who was in relief of Andy Hawkins in the fifth inning. So good news for the Mets, I would think, if Darryl Strawberry can come out of it in the month of September. It was his first home run since July 31st of this year. He had not hit a home run in the month of August. He was out of this, uh, the last three ball games with lower back pains. So Darryl Strawberry is back in action. This second ball game should be a very interesting one as Eric Shaw, the ace of the Padres staff, goes for the San Diego Padres against Calvin Schiralde, a young University of Texas grad. He was 14-3 and three this year uh, with the Jackson, Mississippi AA team. He was 3-1 and one for Tidewater. Uh, he was the pitcher of the year last year uh, in college baseball right out of the University of Texas. Uh, he's from Houston, Texas, makes his home in Austin, Texas. So it should be an interesting start, and it, it would be interesting to know what's going through the mind of young Calvin Schiraldi at this particular time. The Mets now 6-4 and four against the San Diego Padres on the year. They are 2-2 two and two here at Shea Stadium and 2-4 and four at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. The Padres now only 10 games back. By the way, their magic number is 18. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Rob Kiner, and Kiner's Corner coming your way between games of the doubleheader. We're going to have as our special guests, two of the hitting heroes of the ballgame, Keith Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry. We'll be back to talk to them right after this word from Mitsubishi. Keith Hernandez, who had another fine night, and Daryl Strawberry, who broke through with a big home run as the Mets won their ball game by a score of 7-4. to four. And Keith, with the Cubs winning earlier today, it put the pressure on again. Does that make any difference to you, whether you know whether the club has won or not? Well, when you're playing two, we got, you know, if we split, we lose a half game. But with Dwight and the Hill, we know that we've got a good chance to win the first one. So um, now that we won the first one, we got our work cut out for us because we got to face their ace now, Eric Shaw, and uh, try to get a sweep. Were you surprised that uh, Dick uh, Williams took out all of his regular ball players and went to the bench in the, uh, what about the middle of the ball game? I was very surprised because, you know, it was a 7-2 ball game early and, you know, anything can happen. And as it turned out, they had a shot to uh, beat us late in the game and uh, who knows if they had a Garvino lineup or Nettles or whatever. So I'm fortunate for us, uh, fortunate for us that he didn't make that move. Well, as it turned out, some of the Scrabinis, as they're called, the fellows that don't play on a regular basis, did come through with some big base hits and put the pressure on the New York Mets and Dwight Gooden. And Daryl Strawberry, of course, Daryl, you're always an item in New York. That's the, that's the price you got to pay. But breaking out of your batting slump with that home run, has that really had to make you feel good. It made me feel real good. I hadn't been playing well and doing things to help the ball club down the stretch, and I've been kind of disappointed in myself the way I've been playing it. But I got a month left to go and hopefully I could do some great things to help this ball club get back in, get back on top of the division. Because I think, 
the ball club's been playing well all year without me in the lineup doing the things I'm capable of doing to help the club. If I can get in there and do the things to help the ball club, I think we can win the division. Well, Dwight, you know, one of the things that happens to every ball player is you come into the major leagues, and of course you, you're playing in a uh, fishbowl here in New York. Uh, everything is magnified so much, especially when you're in a pennant race, and uh, you don't have to do all that. You know, you're not supposed to be the guy that hits all. Well, you got a fellow like uh, Keith Hernandez here. You just go out there and do your job. Now, I think the key play of the ball game was the play you made in the line drive in right field. If that ball goes through, that might have changed the whole ball game. Yeah, well, it's important for me to play defense, even though things are not going well offensively. And you, you know, if a player takes his offense out to the outfield, it, it, it kind of messes minds up, and I don't want to take that out there. I want to help this ball club in all ways. Well, you certainly came through in a big ball game here as the Mets won to keep pace with the Chicago Cubs, who won their ball game today 4-1. to one. The Cubs scoring three runs in the ninth inning to pull that game out. They were tied 1-1 going into the ninth inning. And, of course, Keith Hernandez playing at first base. And, Keith, you came through with three base hits your first three times up, and uh, all that helps. And uh, how do you go about a pennant race now? You've been in them before. You've been with good ball clubs. Uh, do you... Do you just try to keep the thing in perspective and just go at it, uh, as everyone says, one game at a time or one at bat at a time? Do you think that, how do you do that? Well, I just think that uh, people talk about pressure in a stretch run. I just think that to eliminate pressure, I've been on clubs where you're out of it and playing the season out and all you have to look forward to is trying to spoil somebody and you really have to find ways to get yourself up. When you're in a stretch run, uh, you come to the park every day and you've, you've got the incentive to, to uh, get yourself up for a ball game. and. Uh, to me, pennant races are where it's at, and uh, it makes it fun. It makes the, the last uh, month and a half or month of the season fun because you come to the park and you got something to play for, and it's a challenge, and that's the way to look at it. And if you approach it as a challenge, uh, it, it eliminates a lot of the pressure. Just go ahead and say, hey, this is fun. We've got a lot of people out here in the stands watching. It's got to be a heck of a lot easier to play with 40,000 people in the stands, and they're out there, they're behind you, and they'll get on you if you don't do well, but that's all part of it. That's part of the game of baseball, and uh, you just got to go at it and say, I'm going to do my best. Well, you know, the, I think basically fans just want the, the player to hustle and, and give it 100%. You're going to have a small percentage that are going to boo you, even though you're, you're giving it your best, but the majority of the fans, I, as long as you give it 100%, uh, I don't think that they're going to get on you. Uh, then that's the, the number one thing, and they have a right for that. They're paying their money, and we're getting paid money, and really, uh, as far as your teammates are concerned, you have to hustle because you're selling the other 24 short if you don't hustle. Well, the Mets, of course, had Dwight Gooden on the mound as he had another good strikeout night. He struck out his 10 batters in this ball game, and he now has done it 11 times too short of the Met record. And it looked like it was going to be a walk away for the New York Mets, but again, it's never quite that easy because the San Diego Padres is an outstanding ball club. They figured to win it in the Western Division of the National League. We'll be right back with the stars of this game. It is Keith Hernandez and also Daryl Strawberry. But first, this message from Mr. Vissi. Yes, in the show, Keith Hernandez between games of the doubleheader and Daryl Strawberry. And one of the problems that Daryl will have to go through, and it's a problem that all people who stand out in the crowd have to go through. Ted Williams, everywhere he went, they knew him because he was always a head taller than anybody. And Dwight, you, everywhere you go, they got to be asking for your autograph, talking to you about baseball, talking to you about the pennant race. I noticed the other day you were photographed over watching the tennis matches. How'd that work out? Well, I was just sitting there watching the matches. I thought it was, you know, a good time to get away on an off day and watch some tennis. I like tennis, but you know, everywhere I go, people notice me here. And, you know, it's been, been kind of rough on me because I hadn't been playing well. But, you know, that's part of growing up and going through a lot of things when you have so much attention around you. Well, those are the things you have to go through uh, to become a star, and, and it takes some time to learn them. There's, there's no doubt about that. Well, the home run had to help you in this ball game, and you hit the ball very hard your second, your last time up, and that had to feel good, even though you first baseman made a good play on it. Well, yeah, I feel good. Like I said, this is the important month for me right here, to really bear down on top of myself and do some good things to help the ball club down the stretch. And if I could do that, I'd be very pleased with the outcome of my season. Keith, you went a long way on a ground ball today, right in front of Wally Backman, the second baseman, made a good play to, to get the ball over the first to Gooden. Uh, one of the things I think that helps the ball club a lot with Wally Backman at second base is the fact you had that outstanding range at first base. It allows him to play a little bit closer to second for the double play. Yeah, well, I've always aggressive in the hole, and I really shouldn't have gone after that ball, but once I had committed myself to the ball, I said, well, I might as well just go ahead and go after it. Um, Dwight made a nice play on catching the ball because the throw was low. But it does enable Wally to play more up the middle and take base hits up the middle away and, and also be in position for, for the double play. 
And, of course, Keith uh, coming up with those three base hits, which did not hurt in the ballgame. The Mets had a total of 12 base hits in the ballgame against the San Diego Padres. Well, you got to get back for the second game. I know you're in there, so uh, we're appreciative that you did show up. So thanks a lot, Keith. <laughs> well, my, my pleasure, Ralph. And also thank you, Darrell. Good luck in the second ball game. All right, thank you, Ralph. We're going to be back with the highlights of the ball game in just a moment. But first, this message from Mr. Bishop. Won it by a score of seven to four in the first game of this doubleheader. Last night they split a doubleheader. They need a win here in the second ball game to win their fourth doubleheader of the season. We had some fine highlights in the ball game. Let's take a look at them. Here's Yubi Brooks in the bottom of the first inning. He singles to center field. On the play, Keith Hernandez comes in to score. Keith had singled to center field. A walk had followed. So the Mets are leading by a score of one to nothing. A big strikeout here. Bases are loaded, and Hawkins, the pitcher, is struck out. Now it's Wally Backman. He singles the left, scoring Ray Knight. And the Mets take the lead by a score of two to nothing. Ray Knight in the ball game had singled the left field to get on base. In the bottom of the second inning, Keith Hernandez singles the right field. And he scores Mike Fitzgerald. The throw by Tony Gwynn is offline just a shade enough to allow the run to score. The Mets leading by a score of three to nothing. Here in the top of the third, no one out. Wiggins at third base, Gwynn at second. Garvey singles up the middle, and the Padres get two back, and it's now the Mets three and the Padres two. In the bottom of the fourth inning, with one out, Backman is on third base. Hernandez doubles into left center field. The try for the ball out there by Bobby Brown, not successful. And the Mets now lead by a score of four to two as Backman comes in to score. In the bottom of the fourth inning, it's George Foster. He singles the right field, and Keith Hernandez comes in from second base to score, and the Mets are leading by a score of 5-2. to two. Then Darryl Strawberry hits a home run to right field, a big hit in the ball game. It comes off of Booker, and the Mets now lead by a score of 7-2. to two. It looked like a walk away, but as Strawberry goes around the bases, things turned out to be not quite so easy in the top of the eighth inning. With one out, Ramirez walks. Bochi doubles in the left field, and Ramirez scores. That makes it the Mets 7 and the Padres 3. In the same inning, Bavacqua singles. Bocqui, Bochi to third, and Brown hits a sacrifice fly to right field, scoring Bochi. And the Mets now have a lead of just 7 to 4. But then Jesse Orozco came into the ball game, and with the bases loaded, the tying run at first base, the winning run at the plate, Bochi grounds out the Ray Knight at third base, and the Mets hang on to win it by a score of 7-4. to four. So it's Orozco finishing the ball game for Dwight Gooden. Gooden, the winning pitcher in the ball game, and he now has won 14 and lost 8. So Dwight Gooden, the winning pitcher. The Mets will be going in the second ball game with a newcomer, and we'll be back to tell you about that in just a moment. Right now, though, let's go upstairs as we remind you that this has been brought to you by Mitsubishi. Mr. Mishy takes you where you've never been before. My guest, while we have some time, is Frank Cashin, the general manager of the New York Mets. Uh, congratulations on the first victory, and, and certainly the, the way the team has played so far this season, Frank, uh, has got to, got to have made you very, very happy. Oh, certainly has made me very happy, very <laughs> pleased. You know, we felt that we were going to have a pretty good ball club coming into this year, but uh, honestly, I didn't expect to be... Um, this many games over 500 and really chasing the Cubs in an all-out bid to uh, to win the Eastern Division. Uh, you and Davey Johnson were uh, very outspoken in your uh, prognosis uh, in spring training by saying that this ball club would contend. And it wasn't that uh, everybody doubted you or Davey, oh, oh, oh. but I, I, but I, but really, yeah. I mean, to, uh, you were the two guys that said it more than anybody else, maybe for different reasons. But why did you have that optimistic an attitude about this ball club? Well, I felt first of all that uh, opening the season with Keith Hernandez at first base and with uh, Daryl Strawberry in right field that we were about 20 percent better ball club offensively than we had opened the previous year. Uh, secondly, we had taken the time to establish some young arms, particularly Terrell and then Darling at the end of the year. And I knew that some of those people were ready to challenge for jobs in the major leagues. And the third thing, which I suppose comes from running a ball club, is that we have been building, we have been winning at double A, we have been winning at triple A, and I knew that a lot of those players were about ready for delivery in the major league level. And as you know, I'm sort of paranoid about the fact that you have to teach people to win in the minor leagues uh, they have to learn to win at a ball and double a ball and triple a ball and then by the time you bring them to the major leagues you have winners and you are also uh, paranoid about the fact that each minor league player should go jump one classification at a time 
And here Dwight Gooden pitching in Class A ball last night, and uh, he is such a sparkling success here in the city of New York where things can be tough if you don't succeed. That's true. Uh, any person who has a set of rules that he lays down is completely inflexible. I think is doomed <laughs> to failure. Uh, I prefer that the ball players take one step at a time. Sometimes uh, some players have to go back to the second to a to a league for the second time. Billy Bean, uh, who we drafted alongside at Darrell Strawberry uh, three four years ago, has spent three years at Double A, but now he's really starting to move, and uh, he may be uh, up here, and we may take a look at him before the season's out. Uh, that's how fast or how slow they can move. As Ralph Kiner works his way uh, back up to the broadcast booth here, our guest is Frank Cashin, the general manager of the New York Mets, of course. You, you have made one big deal in the last week, and that was landing Ray Knight. Uh, several things. Number one, have the, have the players to be named later been named? And number two, do you have anything else... Uh, uh, in line as far as the trade is concerned over the next couple of weeks. Uh, two of the players have been named. Manny Lee, a little shortstop uh, that played for our uh, team in the South Atlantic League, was one of the players. And Gerald uh, Young, a, a center fielder uh, at that same team, went. We're sort of knee-deep in center fielders at the moment down through our system. There is a young pitcher that's going to go. He has not been identified. Uh, it's the kind of a deal that we felt we could make because we were sort of dealing from some of our strengths and as far as I was concerned we were certainly going to shore up one of our weaknesses which was uh, that we didn't really have anybody to back up at third base nor even uh -huh. really to back up at first base and that's why we got Ray Knight. And of course moving Hubie Brooks to shortstop has it's kind of been a you know it, it's so refreshing to watch this club operate day in and day out because it's like a renegade ball club there are a lot of uh, young players on the team now Hubie moves to shortstop a position he hadn't played in six years and it's it, it certainly would be refreshing to see them successful in the process uh, no reason why he shouldn't uh, you know he's going to take it's going to take a little work and getting a double play down and make it uh, the way that you would like to see double m plays made working with the second baseman but uh Ubi has really got immense talent and he's an immense athlete and there shouldn't really be that much problem ultimately in making the switch uh, during the first game, I was sitting with Daryl Johnson, who's just one of the best minds in baseball and mm -hmm. works for us, and we were saying just the, the options we now have with this ball club and going to the winter meetings and trying to improve this ball club for next year. Because we got two people that can play third base, we got five or six that can play shortstop, uh, we got a flock of second basemen, we got some good mid infielders, and it's going to give us a little room to deal. Uh, the other very interesting thing I think about the second game coming up is going to be the appearance of Calvin Schiraldi mm -hmm. and also Herm Winningham is going to get his first start in the major leagues to, uh, in the second game and that's always sort of fun to see those guys come along. But the Schiraldi thing is interesting because if he can go out there and show us he can pitch, it doesn't make any difference if he's not ready to start on day one in the majors next year. If we know that by July we can go down and he is really going to be ready to go, much like we did with Sid, uh, uh -huh. uh, Sid, Fernandez. Sir, Sid mm -hmm. Fernandez this year, then that's going to make us a, st a stronger ball club. It's also going to give us some ways and some things we can give up to improve ourselves. You mentioned the winter meetings without divulging uh, any uh, <laughs> trades or anything. What do you think are, would be your priorities when you go to the winter meetings in December? In uh, December? We have uh, verbalized some of them. We haven't really put them down on a piece of paper yet. I got a pretty good working idea what it would be, but I'm going to take the Fifth Amendment. Okay, and take today. okay, that's fair enough. I, uh, well, I had to. You can't take the Fifth on <laughs> on seeing Daryl Strawberry with his first home run uh, since no, July 31st. Uh, huh? I can't take the Fifth on that. And <laughs> I, I was reminded of something that I said to somebody came in to interview me the other day, and they said to to me what's the most as far as you're concerned what is the most exciting thing about this ball club and I thought for a moment I said the most exciting thing about this ball club is that it's going to be better next year mm -hmm. Daryl Strawberry only 22 years old and of course Dwight Gooden will be 20 years old November 16th our guest is Frank Cashin the general manager of the New York Mets who finds uh, the Mets right now five and a half games behind the Chicago Cubs the Cubs won again today uh, right. They are proving that they're an awfully tough ball club, aren't they? Oh, they are. They're playing at the rate of winning 100 ball games a year, and when you win 100 ball games, it's pretty tough to, to catch. But uh, we got a shot. Stranger things have happened in the month of nice September. Success. And uh, we do have six games against them head-to-head, -head, and if we can narrow the thing a little bit, and by the time they come into town next weekend, we're going to have a lot of fun out here. Yeah, the many things. Ralph mentioned several that uh, of the finishes uh, tonight during the broadcast. The 51 
Giants, of course, mm -hmm. who caught the Dodgers and then the playoff and Thompson hitting the home run. 64 Cardinals. Uh, I was with St. Louis at the time that year, and we were six and a half games back with 12 games to play, and the mm -hmm. Phillies lost 10 in a row and ended up winning it on the last day of the season. And, of course, the 78 Yankees, who were 14 and a half back in the middle of August. Uh, so I guess your point is well taken that until you're in a September drive, because time is running out, you don't really uh, realize how tenuous it is and how tedious it can be, and certainly you were in a lot of those over with Baltimore, right? Yeah, I was, and the one thing I do know is that this, the closer the time period comes, the more we can accordion in the time period, the more important that pitching becomes, because mm -hmm. pitching usually beats hitting in a sh over a short period of time, and I do think we have the best pitching staff in the Eastern Division of the National League. Certainly nice to get Doug Sis back also for the September. Doug had been on the disabled list with a sore shoulder. He is back and healthy, it appears. That is true, and uh, we're just, uh, you know, we cannot complain. We've had a little bit of a rash of injuries lately, but uh, overall, through the season, uh, uh, things equal out, and uh, we can't complain about injuries. Well, I want to tell you one thing, my friend. has been a remarkable year, and certainly a lot more fun than last year. <laughs> as, you, as you well know. Winning always beats losing, Tim. The Mets won the first game 7-4. to four. The winning pitcher, Dwight Gooden, and for the 11th time this year, he struck out 10 or more batters, and Ralph Kiner and I will be back with the start of game to 8.55 game time right after this commercial message.